speech. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Schumer, Congressman Maloney, Congressman uh, Saxton, members of the committee, I'm very pleased to be here today. And you have my bio from Senator Schumer. There is an increasingly held view that the U.S. economy is slipping into a sustained period of slow economic growth, perhaps even recession. The root of that worsening economic news is believed to be the collapsing housing sector and the financial institutions and practices that surround residential construction and mortgages. Uh, further, it is beginning to look as though declines in housing sales, construction, and mortgage credit industry in general will continue in 2008 as the mortgage default rate, principally on adjustable rate mortgages, increase. It is estimated that something above 2 million subprime adjustable rate mortgages will reset to a higher interest rate in the first few months. The specter of further declines in home prices, more turmoil in credit markets, and the emergence of secondary adverse effects in other parts of the economy stemming from these price and credit events have raised concern about the general economy's near-term outlook. So what should Congress do? As I will argue late, later in this testimony, Congress obviously should do something, uh, should do nothing to harm the economy. Uh, that's an obvious point, but worth stating. Uh, it should let the Federal Reserve lead the effort to stabilize economic activity and it should keep its focus on crafting long-term pro-growth economic policy. Congress should take this moment of slow growth to do what it does best, to set broad economic policy. In this instance, Congress should concentrate on signaling to investors and workers alike that its principal focus will be on improving pro-growth economic policy, mainly in the areas of tax, regulatory, and spending policy areas. Uh, serious work by the Congress in these areas will create greater predictability for investors and business owners and assure workers that they will have a better chance of improving their wages through increased productivity. Uh, how do I see the economy? Larry has basically signaled my testimony, but let me just hit a few points. While I continue to believe that the U.S. economy's strength and robust robustness are its principal characteristics now, I too have concluded that near-term prospects are poor. For example, the probability of recession has risen in our models from 35 to 40 percent. And I could easily see little or zero growth in GDP when the fourth quarter estimates are published. The decline in residential construction will continue for some time, consumer and investment spending will slow, and growing inventories, principally in the automotive sector, will become a drag on the economy where, automotive, where inventory buildup in the third quarter actually explains some of the large 4.9 percent growth rate we saw then. That said, we expect GDP growth in 2008 to remain around 2 percent and monthly employment growth averaging 75,000 jobs. This is slow growth. This is not recession. The reason I believe we avoid recession in 2008 is due in large part to the substantial contributions to GDP from exports. While domestic demand is expected to grow by a paltry nine-tenths of a percent over the next two quarters, exports are forecasted in our models to expand by 10 percent. Recent U.S. export growth stems in, uh, from the lengthening above-trend growth in world GDP, largely due to economic strength in Europe and the long-awaited emergence of China and India in the top tier of industrial economies. What should Congress do given the slow growth? I'm only going to talk about tax policy. I do in my written testimony have mortgage markets regulation and long-term spending as well, and I direct you to that. On tax policy, what can we do to to decrease risk. Uh, and risk is part of the problem here. Because investors, the people who drive the economy, that create the jobs, that buy the equipment, that improves the productivity, which causes wages to rise, have seen a signal of increasing taxes. Among the first things Congress can do to address the current slowdown is to pronounce definitively, one way or the other, on the tax increases scheduled for 2009 and 2011. There are projects, new businesses, and expansion of existing businesses that would be undertaken today if Congress signaled that taxes would be lower in three years. Since nearly all major capital undertakings last beyond this three-year period, it is likely that making all or most of the Bush tax reductions in some fashion permanent would stimulate economic activity today as well as in 2011. I am probably not the only one here today who knows of businesses that are preparing now for higher taxes in 2011. They are preparing themselves by reducing their riskier projects and providing for stronger cash flows in 2010. It is altogether possible that there are projects being canceled today that would otherwise go forward today if taxes were not scheduled to rise in 2011. 
At times like the present, the speech of policymakers is as important as the policy actions they take. The decision makers in business and investment are watching Washington as closely as ever to discern the direction that Congress will take when responding to this crisis. If that direction includes tax increases, then investors will find more favorable economies to support and business owners will, as much as they can, locate their expanded activities in places with more favorable tax regimes. Thus, Congress should signal today what it plans to do on taxes today in, in two and three years. For my part, I urge that Congress make permanent the key provisions of the 01 and 03 tax law changes, making, uh, maintaining lower tax rates on labor and capital income will encourage both labor and capital to work harder now when we need that greater activity. In addition, we know from past experience that accelerating the tax depreciation of capital equipment and buildings or one-year expensing of business purchases that otherwise would be depreciated over a longer period of time for tax purposes can help during periods of slow growth. This was certainly, uh, this was certainly the record in the last slump. Demand-side stimulus, tax rebates, child tax credit, 10 percent tax record have done little, in fact, to change the course of sluggish economies and that record is fairly now complete. The tax re rebates of 2001 did little to stimulate the economy or move it from a prolonged sluggish growth trend. Indeed, the contraction in investment and thus job creation did not begin to improve until after the 30 percent partial expensing in the 2002 Act and the 50 percent partial expen expensing in the 2003 Act, which also cut the tax rates on dividend and capital income. I am all in favor of temporary tax cuts, especially in this area. If you look at businesses and how they behave when you put in front of them bonus depreciation, especially if it's targeted in industries that have poor job performance, they eat those tax cuts up. There's almost an inf infinite elasticity on, on this point. So I will join with everybody at this table and with uh, what I've heard I here in supporting a, a stimulus package or in writing about it that includes the right kind of pro-growth tax policies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Beecher.